Rod Moore with a torn ACL taken off the field. Of course, he wrapped up the Ohio State win in an arbor. That's uh, the play that he is best known for. But top to bottom, he was super solid. And so how does this impact uh, the rest of the deal in, in the back end there? Because, of course, Keon Sab had already transferred. Yeah, so Sab transferred him to that obviously is a big hit for Michigan because Sab was a huge player. And if they knew that Moore was going to be out, obviously would like to have him because Sab played a lot of really good snaps last year and he was really coming into his own. So Alabama got a good one there. Uh, it makes Michigan bringing back Quentin Johnson that much more important, who has really been a reserve guy, but pushed for some playing time later in the year. And as the season went on last year, and now he's going to have to step into a role where it's him or Zeke Barry battling for Rod Moore's spot. You still have Makari Page in the back end, but Michigan's only returning two starters in their secondary now uh, after losing more because Will Johnson's the other one. And so there's a lot of unknowns in that part of the defense. And so, you, like I mentioned, uh, Quentin Johnson, I'm, he's the vet. Zeke Barry is a younger guy who might be a little bit more talented but hasn't gotten that chance to prove it. Brandon Hillman is also someone who played a little bit last year as a freshman coming in this season and has a shot to play as well. And he, um, he was, you know, he's been tweeting about uh, pretty much that he's, he feels like people are writing uh, Michigan fans are writing him off as a guy who could come in and, and play some meaningful minutes in that secondary because Michigan fans, a lot of them clamoring for uh, now this would be tampering, but to go get key on Sab or just, you know, maybe, Oh, Sab sees what's going on at Michigan. He has a chance to come back and, you know, the spring portal uh, window. So I don't know, but having an injury like that, at least, you know, if there's a, a positive to look at it, it happened now because Michigan can now prepare. They can get the reps to the guys that need it. Uh, and knowing that they're not going to have more back who might've been one of the best safeties in the country coming into this season might've been the best. He's you know, going to be up there for sure if he was playing. Uh, and so now you look at probably a recovery period that I don't think more can get back on the field from, you know, he'd really have to push that, that, that recovery process to get back. So that secondary, lots of questions, but some guys who have some experience or at least have been around and some young guys that maybe have a chance to show out. Nelson Hubble's here breaking down the maize and blue and maize and blue review is your destination for Michigan football coverage with Nelson and the rest of the staff there. Please subscribe here at the voice of college football as well. All right, let's keep going through the secondary. Josh Wallace moves on. Mike Sandra still, who was just super impressive in regards to reshaping his career, moving from wide receiver to cornerback and his ball skills. Exceptional. Will Johnson still there as one of the best players in the nation. Yeah, so Will Johnson is the solid number one guy in that secondary. We know that, can rely on that. You're going to look across from him at probably DJ Waller or Jair Hill. Uh, Waller played a bit more than Hill this past season, and we saw him in some uh, some backup snaps and just coming in to give some guys a breather every once in a while. And so he's going to battle for the job. He's a lengthy corner. Jair Hill a little bit shorter, but really highly touted uh, four-star recruit. And Hill, I think, has you know, the capabilities of being a shutdown corner at some point in his career. It's still early. Uh, and so we'll see how that goes. That, that plays out. That's the battle for sure. Eileen... Uh, based on just getting playing time towards Waller uh, and sort of what Wink Martindale likes to do. I think the length of Waller in the secondary would be really valuable. We'll see. Then slot corner, which is Jaden McBurrows. It just seems like that's probably his job. It's kind of locked up with him. You could maybe see, uh, well, but, you know, before coming in, I thought in, at nickel, uh, we might see more Rod Moore coming down and playing nickel with the safety depth that they had. But then, Keon Sab transferred out and then Moore got hurt. And so now you're totally reliant on McBurrows, but he's flashed as well. And he's looked good when he's played. You know, he had a season ending injury a year ago or so. Uh, and so, you know, he played last year in spare, spare minutes, but uh, behind Mike Sainer still and others. But I think McBurrows has a chance to be a really good corner, uh, at least a really good nickel. And then beyond that, depth-wise, you might see a guy like Cody Jones battling for that nickel slot as well. Uh, but the secondary is starting to get kind of thin. A lot of unknowns back there, uh, especially without Moore now. And, you know, Wallace moving on. And so 
some young guys are going to have to step up. And this is just how it goes every year with every program. This is college football, right? So, there are going to be guys who emerge here coming out of spring that we're going to see that might uh, surprise some people. It could be Jones, who you know, a lot of a lot of people were very high on. Uh, he's from the state of Tennessee, coming in uh, as a freshman last year. You know, so we'll see. It's it's good for them to have a guy like Will Johnson on the other side. If you're talking about outside corner, because they're not going to be the one following around the number one guy. That's going to be Will Johnson, and it's to a point where. Michigan's unknowns they can accept it in the same vein because Johnson can follow people around you know last year I think he was doing that more and more uh, but his freshman year uh, it wasn't as common just because he was still developing and, and getting comfortable in the scheme uh, and as a college player so now you have a guy who really truly can follow around whatever receiver you want him to and it, it lets guys settle in now going up against Texas you know, that early in the season, that's, that's what we're going to be talking about all off season is, is can they develop these guys enough going into that game? And even then, man, I mean, Texas, there's a reason they're one of the title favorites coming back this year. Uh, and so it, it'll still be a tall task, but that's a, a point where we'll see uh, these corners get tested. Absolutely. Against Quinn Evers. Yeah. If this was uh 2021, two or three, then number one, the quarterback play in the Big Ten is largely down and appears to be down still, even with the influx of West Coast teams. But that added non-conference game week number two with Quinn Ewers coming to town uh, presents a challenge for sure. Nelson Hubbles here breaking down the maize and blue on the defensive side. Please check out the videos that we provided on the offensive side with Nelson as well. Shop Amazon. Use the link that we provide in the description section of all the videos. Same shopping experience does not cost you a penny 